All right, so infection control, chapter six, I believe. We'll just go over the review questions that I um, breezed through over during the lecture. All right, why is it important to have a safety plan in a medical office? What should it cover? So, so let's do the why for safety, right? <laughs> So you said it should cover evacuations, accountability, who's in charge of what? What else? What, what type of hazard? This is so electrical, fire. All right, let's see. I think we got most of it. Let's see. Electrical, fire, action plan, chemical, so bloodborne, PPEs, so a bunch of stuff. So it's important to help minimize risks. That's the why. Why is it important for hazardous materials to be correctly labeled? Give me one reason why. I'll give you an example. ID, right? Remember I said that spray bottle, even to clean this whiteboard, can't just be an unmarked bottle. It has to say whiteboard cleaner on it. So ID and then handling, right? Handling instructions and then exposure, a danger risk. So I'll see if they mentioned. Yep. So you can take measures to protect yourself. List three electrical safeguards to practice in the healthcare setting. Okay, so make sure extension cords are anchored down. They don't cause a hazard. Yep, inspect your equipment. Make sure wires aren't frayed. Things are grounded, right? We mentioned AC versus DC, your three prong versus four prong cords. One more. Let's see what they say. So avoid using extension cords, tape them down. So we got that one. Uh, repair and replace, so that's auditing, making sure everything's in working order. Oh, hands are dry. Okay, so keep away from sources of water. So it's not necessarily water that's dangerous. It's the stuff dissolved in the water that makes it conductive. So if it was pure water, then yeah, no problem. Pure water is not conductive. But pure water is expensive. Tap water has a bunch of stuff in there that can conduct electricity. Once at the assembly area, after an evacuation, how would you account for the employees and patient? So employees, how would you account for them? Yeah, yeah, the work schedule. How about for patients? Yeah, so sign in or the appointment. Precautions you should take when working with hazardous substance. So the most important thing, right? I'll start there. So make sure uh, if it is volatile, you have adequate ventilation. What else? Yeah, PPEs if you need it. We mentioned... Uh, Nuclear materials, radioactive materials. So radioactive materials are used as diagnostic and medication. Let's see what they say. Oh yeah. So to prevent splashing into the eyes, store below eye level. Forgot that from lecture. Wear protective gears, that's PPEs. Oh yeah, handle them properly. Ventilation. All right, so we got most of it. 
What did I say about diluting or mixing stuff? Do you put the hazardous stuff in the benign stuff or the benign stuff in the hazardous? Yeah. So if it's water, pour the acid in the water. That way, if anything splashes, it's mostly water. Whose responsibility is it to ensure a safe work environment? Legally responsible. Is it the employer or the employee? The employer, right? You tell me to jump. I'll ask how high, but is it safe for me while I'm in the air? And is it safe for me to land, right? If I don't care. I'll jump, man. Just make sure it's safe for me. So responsibility is the employer. You can't just have unsafe environment for your workers. Whose responsibility is it to follow safe work practices? Now that is the employee, right? So yeah, it is safe for me to jump in the air, but I have to jump this way, both feet together. Right? So didn't they teach you guys that, how to jump off of a helicopter or whatnot? Feet together or feet apart? See, so if you didn't know, you might injure yourself. So as long as you do it correctly, follow direction, it's gonna be Safe. Safer. Nothing's 100% safe. You don't jump out of helicopters? No? How about off the bed? Eight inches. No? <laughs> Nothing. No jumping. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's mostly control falling. <laughs> no parkour? Or hardcore or whatever they call it? Jumping off like streets and benches and stuff? No. What is your role as an MA in breaking the cycle of infection in the medical office? So clean, right? Clean, disinfect. What else? What separate? So a clean, what well, was it? A sick area versus a healthy area? Separate the flu patients in the reception area. What else? Follow. What's that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, don't come to work if you're sick. Let's see. So they say strict housekeeping standards. So, of course, that's cleaning. Uh, follow government guidelines. And then educate patients. Promote health. Okay. Yeah, so those are just general, general guidelines. OSHA divides medical tasks by levels of risk. What are the three risk levels? One, two, and three. So what's required in one? So yeah, that's high risk. And then level two, are, are things required? Some of the time, but not all the time. And then usually level three, no. All right, so three, things that are infectious. So if you're working with infectious substances then yeah put all your ppes if it does not require risk then only some things and then three nothing is required so when your doctor palpates your abdomen right sometimes they don't wear gloves they use their stethoscope describe the difference between medical and surgical asepsis Okay, which one's cleaner? Which one's cleaner of the two, medical or, or surgical? Surgical, all right. So surgical is like sterilization. So there should be zero living microorganism, all right? A, absence. Medical, you're gonna reduce it to as low as possible. So for example, in uh, certain dental equipment, all you need is spray, wipe, spray, let dry. And then you can put it away, use it on the next patient. Dental? Yeah, certain dental equipment. You spray and wipe, <laughs> spray and let dry. And then it's... <laughs> it is. It's already clean. That's, that's the minimum 
cleaning standard for certain equipment. I never liked these answers. <laughs> but um, yeah, go go to a, a reputable reputable place. Did All you right. Do that with the children's stuff? Yeah, that's that's their uh, that's their disinfecting process. Medical asepsis. So that reduces the number. So that just lowers the number. That's medical. Whereas surgical is all is gone. So that's the main difference. So medical lower enough where it most likely won't cause an infection. Surgical, no microbes at all. How is the information on reportable diseases used by the CDC? Better be planning, right? <laughs> So be planning, trending, and tracking. That's that's their main goal. Preventing these diseases. Prevention, prevention, prevention. Go on to lab. We'll do second round of hand washing and now we'll use the sterile gloves.